So a few weeks ago, I dropped this two minute video explaining how I made this liquid morph effect. And some of you wanted a longer, more in-depth version, so here it is. Hey, disconnected! Yeah, Blender just crashed, so I'm gonna have to start over. To speed things up a bit, I've put a link in the description for the starter files. You can go ahead and download that if you want to follow along, but you don't need to. It's honestly just a cylinder with some textures. Also, if you don't want to go through all of this, you can just go ahead and download the original file off of Gumroad. Alright, let's get into it. Once you open up the file, you should be met with this scene. And the first thing we're going to do is select our object, add modifier, vertex weight proximity. For this modifier to work, we're going to need a vertex group and a target object. For our target object, we'll use an empty. And as for the vertex group, we're going to make that ourselves. To do that, let's just head into edit mode, go into the object data properties, and under vertex groups, hit the plus button to create a new vertex group. Now hit A, and then assign all the vertices to this group. Let's head back into our object mode. And now we can use the vertex group we just created in our modifier. Alright, now for the target object. Let's go ahead and add an empty. I'm gonna use a sphere. Scale it down to something reasonable. And position it to be on the upper part of the can. This way we'll be able to see the effect of the vertex weight proximity modifier clearly. Now select the can and head into weight paint mode. Then in the vertex weight proximity modifier, we'll select our empty as the target object. Now let's go ahead and change our proximity mode from object to geometry. We're also going to change our values here. For our highest value, we'll just set that to zero. And for our lowest value, we're going to hit shift and slowly drag it to the right until we find something we like. I think 0.17 or 0.14 is fine. So let's go with that. Next we'll add a displacement modifier, we'll click this to add a new texture and click this to see it in the texture tab. From here we can control our texture settings. We'll use clouds for now. But before that let's change our coordinates from local to object. And we're going to use the same empty as the target object again. And for vertex group, we'll put in the same vertex group we made earlier. Now let's head back into the texture tab and adjust the settings for the displacement. Now since this is our first level of displacement, all we're trying to do is create an inflation effect. And for that we don't need too much detail. Let's go ahead and make our texture size bigger. And we can also use a depth of 0. Now back in the modifier tab, we can change the displacement strength and mid level till we find something we like. Next we'll add a subdivision modifier and we'll leave it at the base settings for now. This is going to give us more geometry to work with for our next level of displacement. Now let's add another displacement modifier and we'll just repeat the same process as the first displacement. Remember to change the coordinates from local to object. Select the empty as the object. And remember to select the vertex group. The main difference here will be the texture. We want more detail on this modifier, so we're going to change the size so we can get more detail. I still suggest leaving the depth at 0 or 1 at most to avoid jittering. And from here, we can just go back into the modifier tab. Go into our second displacement modifier and just play with the strength in the mid-level till you find something you like. Once we've set that up, we can go ahead and add a simple deform modifier. And this is going to help give our mesh a little more motion. So let's set this to the z-axis. And for the angle, you can use whatever you want, but I'm going to use 360. Now for the restrictions, we can just go ahead and plug in the same vertex group that we made earlier. But once we do that, our mesh looks like this when it starts to deform. 
Well then why don't we just leave out the restrictions? Because if we do that, we can't really use the UV mapping anymore. This is what the textures look like without the restrictions. Am I really ugly? <laughs> Come on chat, like... So at this point, you have two choices. A or B. Yeah, Epic B. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. So if you're fine with your mesh looking a little pointy when it starts to deform, you're fine. You can go ahead and put the vertex group in the restrictions and then you can use the UV maps as always. But since I decided not to use the restrictions, I ended up using object mapping instead. Alright, let's head over to the shading tab so you can see what I mean. Stop right there, criminal scum! Actually, before we go into the shading tab, you should add a subdivision modifier right after the simple deform modifier. So go ahead and do that before moving to the shading tab. Alright, I made it as simple as possible to follow along. Basically, if you're going to use the restrictions in the simple deform modifier, you can go ahead and plug in the UV mapped textures. But if you're not using the restrictions, just leave it as is. So now we want to make a transition from the metallic can we have here to liquid. Let's start off by making our liquid. We'll first add in a principled BSDF shader. Set the transmission to 1 and the roughness to 0. Now the IOR we have here is 1.45. We need to change that because that's the IOR of glass. Instead let's use the IOR of water which is 1.33. You can then set the color to whatever you like. Now we have our can shader and we have our liquid shader. So how do we transition these two? How do we mix them? Well luckily, we have a gradient produced by the vertex ray proximity modifier and we can make use of this with geometry nodes. Let's head over to the geometry nodes tab. Let's add a new modifier, geometry nodes. Let's keep this clean and move this under the vertex ray proximity modifier. Let's hit new and now add a capture attribute node. Plug the value into the group input and plug the attribute into the group output. Then in the modifier properties, click this, then click the empty space, and then click this. And here we're going to name our attribute, weight. And now we can head back into the shader editor and add an attribute node. We can just copy and paste our attribute name here. Let's plug this into the viewer to see what that looks like. Yeah, that's working perfectly. Now that that's working, let's go ahead and add a mix shader. We'll plug our liquid texture into the bottom and the can into the top. And for the factor, we'll use the attribute. We'll use a color ramp right after the attribute node to give us more control over the effect. Oh, and I made the top and the bottom a different material from the main can, so you're gonna have to set up the mix shader there as well. You can just copy and paste it, it's a lot faster. Now let's fix these sharp edges that we see at the top and the bottom. What's happening here is that the displace modifier is making the mesh go inside out. If you turn on face orientation mode, you can see that some parts are blue and some parts are red. So the blue parts are okay, but the red parts are all supposed to be inside the mesh. So how do we fix this? An easy fix is to add a geometry node in the shader editor, then plug the back facing into a color ramp and invert the color ramp. Then we can use it as an alpha in the shader. The only problem is this messes with the liquid shader, so some people may prefer not to use it here. But why does this happen in the first place? Well if you take a closer look, you'll notice that this only happens on parts of the mesh where we have sharp edges. So if we can get rid of the sharp edges, we can fix the problem. This is where shape keys come into play. With shape keys, we can create morphs of our object without sharp edges. Now I'm not going to go over how to make shape keys here, but the main idea is to make shape keys for each area that has sharp edges and then round them out and make them as smooth as possible. In our case, we do this for the top and the bottom. I'm just going to speed through this part. Yes, 
I'm finished. Now here's what it looks like with the shape keys. It completely fixes the problem. From here, you can just animate the shape key values to be at 1 whenever those areas are being deformed. You could probably also control your shape keys with drivers, but I haven't tried that yet. And now, you have your own morphing can. You can leave any questions you have in the comment section and I'll answer them. But yeah, if you found the video helpful, consider subscribing and...